Welcome to Hockey Wiz Talks Podcast. Today, I'll be talking about how NHL teams look after NHL free agency. In this podcast, I'll be talking about each NHL's team's farm system, the top 50 prospects, and how the roster looks like after the initial rush of free agent signings. Here are the NHL's best farm system rankings from best to worst. Number 1, Buffalo Sabres. Number 2, Philadelphia Flyers. Number 3, Columbus Blue Jackets. Number 4, Chicago Blackhawks. Number 5, Minnesota Wild. Number 6, Anaheim Ducks. Number 7, Detroit Red Wings. Number 8, New Jersey Devils. Number 9, Arizona Coyotes. Number 10, Washington Capitals. Number 11, Montreal Canadiens. Number 12, San Jose Sharks. Number 13, Winnipeg Jets. Number 14, Dallas Stars. Number 15, Nashville Predators. Number 16, Calgary Flames. Number 7, 17, Los Angeles Kings. Number 18, Carolina Hurricanes. Number 19, Seattle Kraken. Number 20, New York Rangers. Number 21, Ottawa Senators. Number 22, Toronto Maple Leafs. Number 23, St. Louis Blues. Number 24, Edmonton Oilers. Number 25, Vegas Golden Knights. Number 26, Vancouver Canucks. Number 27, Florida Panthers. Number 28, Colorado Avalanche. Number 29, Pittsburgh Penguins. Number 30, Tampa Bay Lightning. Number 31, New York Islanders. And number 32, Boston Bruins. Here are my top 50 NHL prospects. Number 1, Connor Bedard. Number 2, Matvey Michkov. Number 3, Adam Fantilli. Number 4, Leo Carlson. Number 5, Luke Hughes. Number 6, Simon Edvinson. Number 7, David Juracic. Number 8, Logan Cooley. Number 9, Simone Nimic. Number 10, Cutter Gauthier. Number 11, Will Smith. Number 12, David Reinbarker. Number 13, Brant Clark. Number 14, William Eklund. Number 15, Alexander Holtz. Number 16, Lucas Reichel. Number 17, Marco Casper. Number 18, Joachim Kemmel. Number 19, Logan Stankoven. Number 20, Owen Zellweger. Number 21, Pavel Mintyukov. Number 22, Danilo Yurov. Number 23, Ryan Leonard. Number 24, Zach Benson. Number 25, Kirill Marchenko. Number 26, Nathan Goucher. Number 27, Yuri Kulic. Number 28, Marco Rossi. Number 29, William Wallinder. Number 30, Matthew Savoy. Number 31, Matthew Coronado. Number 32, Brock Faber. Number 33, Jacob Pelletier. Number 34, Luke Evangelista. Number 35, Bobby Brink. Number 36, Fabian Lysel. Number 37, Alexander Nikishin. Number 38, Philip Broberg. Number 39, Brendan Othman. Number 40, Lane Hudson. Number 41, Dalibor Dvorsky. Number 42, Nate Danielson. Number 43, Matthew Wood. Number 44, Colby Barlow. Number 45, Oliver Moore. Number 46, Axel Sandin Palika. Number 47, Samuel Hansik. Number 48, Edward Shala. Number 49, Brandon Yeager. And number 50, Gabe Perot. And now a word from our sponsor. Check out my scouting blog at HockeyWiz777Scouting.com. Listen to my scouting blog podcast on podcasters.spotify.com backslash pod backslash show backslash HockeyWiz777Scouting. Here is how NHL teams look like after the initial rush of free agent signings. Bearing any trades, the goalies for the Anaheim Ducks should be John Gibson and Lucas Dostal. Their top four will be Cam Fowler, Jamie Drysdale, Owen Zellweger, and Rako Gudis. But their bottom pair is to be determined as there could be a couple camp surprises or they could sign someone else in free agency to fill out the depth. As far as their top six goes, the top line consists of Trevor Zegers and Troy Terry with Adam Henrique on the left wing. The second line has Mason McTavish centering Alex Killorn who signed with them in free agency and Ryan Strom on the right wing. The third line has Isaac Lindstrom centering Frank Vetrano and Jacob Silverberg which is a really solid third line. The fourth line is pretty solid. It consists of Sam Carrick with Max Jones on the right and Brock McGinn on the left. The Anaheim Ducks still need to lock up Trevor Zegers, Troy Terry, and Jamie Drysdale, three key players of the core. Lucas Dostal is also a RFA and needs a new contract. If there were any needs to address in free agency, I guess it would be to sign some depth defensemen to fill out that third pair unless they have internal solutions at camp. The goalies for the Arizona Coyotes this season will be Carl Vechmelka and Connor Ingram. That should stay the same. Their defense consists of J.J. Moser, Victor Soderstrom, Yusuf Balamaki, Troy Stetcher, Sean Dursey, and Josh Brown. This is a decent defense, but nothing that blows you away. Their top line as of right now consists of Barrett Hayton, Clayton Keller, 
and Nick Schmaltz. Although there are rumors that Clayton Keller is asking for a trade, so it remains to be seen if Keller will be on the team come the start of the season. The second line consists of Travis Boyd centering Alex Kerfoot and Jason Zucker, two newly signed free agents. The Coyotes brought back Nick Bukestad to center the third line with Matthias McShelley and Lawson Krause. The fourth line has Jack McBain centering Dylan Gunther and Liam O'Brien. Having Dylan Gunther on the fourth line is a waste. They have to either find a way to move Nick Schmaltz to get Dylan Gunther more playing time, or they could try to find a way to move Lawson Krause. Either way is fine. Arizona still needs to re-sign Matias Michelli and Jack McBain, but that should be no problem as they have tons of cap space left with over $16 million left to spend. The Boston Bruins will have the same goaltending tandem as they did last year, bearing any trades, with Linus Olmark and Jeremy Swayman. Although there are rumors that they are trying to shop Linus Olmark in order to free up some cap space. Their top four consists of Matt Grizzlick, Charlie McAvoy, Campus Lindholm, and Brandon Carlo. They brought in Kevin Shankirk in free agency to pair alongside Derek Forbert on the third pair. That rounds out their defense very nicely. If Patrice Bergeron does not return, the first line will consist of Pavel Zaka centering Brad Marchand and David Pasternak, Charlie Coyle centering the second line with James Van Riemsdyk on his left and Jake DeBrusque on his right. The third line is Morgan Geeky centering AJ Greer and Trent Frederick. The fourth line consists of Patrick Brown centering Milan Lucic and Oscar Steen. This depth chart is a far cry from what the team was last year after trading away Taylor Hall and losing Tyler Bertuzzi in free agency and obviously without Patrice Bergeron and David Krejci either. If Patrice Bergeron does not return, the Bruins could be in for a long season. Boston still needs to re-sign Jeremy Swayman, Trent Frederick, and Ian Mitchell, three of their RFAs. They should have no issue re-signing Frederick or Ian Mitchell, but Jeremy Swayman is the tough one. The Buffalo Sabres should have a three-man rotation this year with Devon Levi, Eric Comrie, and UPL. This should be a formidable three-goalie combo. The, the Sabres' top four consists of Rossman Stalin, Matthias Samuelson, Owen Power, and Connor Clifton, who they brought in in free agency. The Sabres also signed Eric Johnson, a reliable veteran defenseman, to pair with Ilya Labushkin to round out their defense. The Sabres' first line consists of Tage Thompson centering Alex Tuck on the right and Jeff Skinner on the left. The second line consists of Dylan Cousins centering Victor Olofsson on the right and JJ Paterka on the left. The third line consists of Casey Miltelstedt centering Casey Russell on the right and Jordan Greenway on the left. The fourth line consists of Peyton Krebs centering Semgis Gergensen on the left and Kyle Oposo on the right. The Sabres don't have any RFAs left to sign. However, they could benefit from adding a veteran right winger in free agency. The Calgary Flames could be very different from what they were last season. They already moved off Tyler Toffoli, and there are rumors that they are trying to shop away Elias Lindholm, Noah Hannafin, and Mikhail Backlund. As of right now, their goalies will be Jacob Markstrom and Daniel Vladar. That should not change, as Jacob Markstrom's contract is virtually unmovable. As I, as I said in the opening, Noah Hannafin is rumored to be on the trade block, so he may not be part of the team come the beginning of the season. If Hannafin, if Hannafin is moved, Mackenzie Wieger should move up and pair with Rasmus Anderson on the first pair. They still have Chris Tanev, who's a reliable top four defenseman, but in the event that they trade Hannafin, they need to get a top four defenseman back. The third pair has Jordan Oysterly paired with Nikita Zadorov, a solid third pair, but nothing special. Elias Lindholm is the major name on the trade block right now for the Calgary Flames, as he's one year away from UFA status. They need to get what they can for him now before he bolts in free agency. Should the Calgary Flames move Elias Lindholm, I expect the Calgary Flames to go through a youth movement and start using more of their younger players, such as Connor Zari and Matthew Coronado. As of right now, the only line that should be the same come the beginning of the season is the line with Nazem Kadri, Jonathan Huberto, and Jacob Pelletier. Other than that, all the other lines are subject to change. The Carolina Hurricanes look like they are loading up for yet another playoff run and should be one of the early favorites to win it all. They brought back two of their goalies from last year in Frederick Anderson and Antti Ranta. They should make a solid three goalie combo alongside Peter Kochakov. Bearing any changes, top pair should be Jacob Slavin and Brent Burns. This pair did wonders for them last year. 
They did bring in Dimitri Olaf in free agency. He should be able to step up in the top four role in the event that they have to trade Brett Pesci or Brady Shea, as both of them are due for UFA status next year. If they are forced to move one of them, they are confident that Dylan Coglin can step in and play a prominent role in the defense. The first line of Carolina consists of Sebastian Ajo centering Tebu Teravainen and Seth Jarvis. The second line consists of Jasperi Kakaniemi centering Martin Natchez on the right and Andrei Sveshnikov on the left. The third line consists of Jordan Stahl centering Michael Bunting on the left and Jesper Faust on the right. Jack Drury is rumored to be on the trade block right now, but as of right now, he is listed as their fourth line center with Jordan Marchnook on the left and Stefan Nason on the right. Moving forward, I could see Carolina move either Brady Shea or Brett Pesci in trade packages because I can't see them going into the season with two pending UFAs unsigned. They also have Sebastian Ajo and Tebu Teravainen both heading for UFA next season. But I do expect Sebastian Ajo to get locked up. I'm not sure about Teravainen though. Don't sleep on the Chicago Blackhawks. They could do some damage in that central division with the young talent they have at their disposal. Now their defense and their goaltending could be a weakness, but their goalies could surprise some people. Peter Morazic and Arvid Soderblom are listed as their number one and number two goalies, with Jason Staber as their number three. You can expect to see all three of these goalies during the season. If no rookies make the team, Chicago's defense really consists of Seth Jones, Connor Murphy, all right D heavy. The left D consists of Philip Rose, Jared Tenorti, and Wyatt Kaiser, which is not very good. Their first line center is the newly drafted Connor Bedard, who has all the makings of a franchise superstar. They also brought in Taylor Hall in a trade with the Bruins, and he's flanked on the right side by Lucas Reichel, another top prospect in his own right. Tyler Johnson is listed as the second line center, although it remains to be seen how many games he plays this season. On his left is Andreas Athanasiu, and on his right is Taylor Radish. The third line consists of Jason Dickinson centering Colin Blackwell on the right and Felt Kurashev on the left. The fourth line is actually really good. It consists of Ryan Donato centering Corey Perry on the right and Nick Foligno on the left. I expect there to be some surprises in camp and some young players to make the team. So this depth chart could be different come the beginning of the season. After a disappointing season last year, the Colorado Avalanche are loading up for yet another postseason run. Their goalies should be the same as last year, Alexander Georgiev and Pavel Francois. Their top four is unchanged. It consists of Kale McCarr, Devon Taves, Bowen Byram, and Josh Manson. Sam Girard is dropped to the third pair to pair with Jack Johnson. This is a really good defense and it's arguably the best decor in the NHL. Nathan McKinnon and Miko Rantanen are going to be the heavy lifters on offense. They are joined by Jonathan Druin on the left wing, and the Avs are hoping that his connection with McKinnon and Juniors picks off where it left off. For the second line, the Avs brought in Ryan Johansson in a trade from Nashville, and he is flanked by Arturi Lekkinen on the left and Valeri Nishushkin on the right. The third line looks vastly different from last year. They acquired Ross Colton in a trade from Tampa Bay and signed Miles Wood to a long-term contract. Joining them on that line is Logan O'Connor, a really solid two-way player. The fourth line for the Avalanche shouldn't see much playing time, but with such a loaded top nine, the Avalanche should be good. Ross Colton is an RFA and needs a new contract for the start of the year. It should be noted that Gabriel Landeskog will be on long-term IR for the entire 23-24 season, so they are allowed over $7 million over the cap to spend. In a very tough Metropolitan Division, the Columbus Blue Jackets were forced to get good very fast. And did they ever improve? Their goalies heading into next season are Elvis Merzlikens and Daniil Tarasov. Merzlikens is coming off a career worst season. They hope that he can bounce back. Daniil Tarasov showed some potential last season. He looks to have a bright future. Their top four defense consists of two newly acquired defensemen and Damon Severson and Ivan Provorov. Severson in a sign-in trade with New Jersey, and Ivan Provorov in a trade with Philadelphia. Severson will be paired with Zach Wierenski on the first pair, and Provorov will be paired with Andrew Peak on the second pair. This leaves Adam Boquist to be paired with Eric Goodbronson on the third pair. As of right now, Boone Jenner is listed as the first line center, with Johnny Goudreau on his left and Patrick Laine on his right. Third overall draft pick, Adam Fantilli, 
centers the second line with Kent Johnson on his left and Kirill Moshenko on his right. This line could be the key to the Blue Jackets offense this year. If this line can step up their play, they could be a threat. If they disappoint, Columbus will have a subpar year. The third line consists of Cole Sillinger centering Emil Benstrom and Jack Roslovic. Sean Corrali centers the fourth line with Eric Robinson on his left and Matthew Oliver on his right. It should be noted that Justin Danforth and Jake Bean are listed on IR, so it remains to be seen how these two fit into the lineup. Check out my hockey blog at hockeywithtalkshockey.blogspot.com. After losing in the conference finals last year, the Dallas Stars hope to make it further in the playoffs this year. Their goalies will consist of Jake Oninger and Scott Wedgwood, although Jake Oninger should be the workhorse goalie in net. Their defense is virtually the same. It consists of Miro Heiskanen with Ryan Suter on the top pair, Thomas Harley with Johnny Hockenpah on the second pair, and Issa Lindell with Nils Lundqvist on the third pair. To make up for a weak defense, the Stars have to have a great offense, and do they ever. They are led by a dynamic first line consisting of Rope Hintz, Jason Robertson, and Joe Pavelski. Followed by a second line, which is centered by Wyatt Johnson, flanked by Jamie Benn on the left and Evgeny Dadanov on the right. Tyler Sagan gets dropped to the third line and is flanked by Mason Marchment on the left and the newly acquired free agent Matt Duchesne on the right. Radek Foxa centers the fourth line with Sam Steele on the left and Ty Delandria on the right. The Stars still need to re-sign Ty Delandria as he is a RFA. Looking at the Dallas Stars roster, they look pretty solid heading into the season. The Detroit Red Wings had plenty to spend heading into this offseason, and did they ever. They brought in James Reimer on a one-year deal to back up Veli Husso. Husso and Reimer should be a formidable tandem in net. On defense, their first pair should be unchanged from last season. It consists of Jake Wallman and Morin Sider. Their second pair is completely changed. They brought in Shane Gossespierre and Justin Hall in free agency. And for the third pair, they'll have Ole Mata and Ben Sherratt. Fans have been criticizing Steve Yzerman, but the depth chart looks pretty good. The first line consists of Dylan Larkin centering Lucas Raymond and Dominic Kubelik. The second line consists of JT Comfer centering David Perron on his right and Jonathan Begrin on his left. Andrew Kopp centers the third line with Robbie Fabry on his left and Daniel Sprong on his right. Michael Rasmussen centers the fourth line with Christian Fisher and Clem Coaston, two newly acquired players. Joe Valeno is an RFA and needs a new contract. I could see Joe Valeno slotting in on the third or fourth line in case of injuries. If there's anything that Red Wings need, it's a second line left winger. And you better believe that Steve Yzerman has something in plan. With 13.5 mil in cap space left. The Edmonton Oilers are one of the teams that don't have many changes, but they do have some. The goalies are virtually unchanged. Stuart Skinner and Jack Campbell are still the goalies. They should be a solid tandem in net. Their defense is exactly the same as last year. The first pair is Darnell Nurse with Cody Ceci. Second pair is Matthias Ekholm with Evan Bouchard. The third pair is Brett Kulak with Vincent Deharnay. And Phil Broberg should slot in some games. The first line is obviously centered by Connor McDavid. He is flanked by Zach Hyman on his left and newly signed free agent Connor Brown on his right. Leon Dreisel centers the second line with Ryan Nugent Hopkins on his left and Evander Kane on his right. Ryan McLeod centers the third line with Matthias Yanmark on his left and Warren Fogel on his right. Lane Peterson was signed to play fourth line center. He is flanked by Dylan Holloway on his left and Derek Ryan on his right. The Oilers obviously could use some upgrades, but the issue is that they only have around 5.6 million in cap space, and they still need to sign Evan Bouchard and Ryan McLeod. So they will need to be creative to free up some cap space. After losing in the Stanley Cup Finals last year, the Panthers hope to make it back next year. The number one goalie will still be Sergei Bobrovsky, with Anthony Stolarz being the number two, and Spencer Knight working his way back from the NHLPA player assistance program. The Panthers signed a bunch of defensemen in free agency, including Oliver ekman Larson, Dmitry Kulikov, Nico Mikula, and Mike Riley. You know that Forsling, Ekblad, and Montour should be their top three, so it remains to be seen how the depth fills out and where all these four defensemen that are newly... F so it remains to be seen how the newly signed defensemen fit in with Florida. The first line consists of Alexander Barkov centering Sam Reinhardt on his right and Evan Rodriguez on his left. 
who they signed in free agency. The second line consists of Sam Bennett centering Matthew Kachuk on his right and Carter Verhage on his left. Anton Lundell centers the third line with East Tulis Durenin on his left and Grigory Denisenko on his right. Steven Lorenz centers the third line with Nick Cousins on his right and Dylan Lomberg on his left. Looking ahead, both Brandon Montour and Gustav Forsling are UFAs. Oliver ekman Larson, Mike Riley, and Dmitry Kulikov all signed one-year deals. And Sam Reinhart is also UFA next year. So this year will be very important. The Los Angeles Kings are heading into this season with a vastly improved roster. However, their goaltending could be their Achilles heel. They still have Phoenix Copley and they brought in Cam Talbot to back him up. They also signed David Riddich. There's nothing special about these three goalies and the defense is going to have to play very well in front of them if they want to win in the Pacific Division. The top four defense remains the same for LA. It consists of Drew Doughty, Mikey Anderson, Vladislav Gavrikov, and Matt Roy. The third pair is where the changes occur. Brant Clark and Tobias Bornfot are slotted in as the third pair. These are two highly hyped prospects that have bright futures. The Kings have to be very careful in how they handle them and not overexpose them. The first line for LA is centered by Ante Kopitar. He is flanked by Adrian Kempe on his right and Quinton Byfield on his left. The second line is centered by Pierre-Luc Dubois, who they acquired in a sign-in trade. He is flanked by Kevin Fiala on his left and Arthur Kaliav on his right. Philip Deneau is joined by his longtime wingers Victor Arvidsson and Trevor Moore on the third line. The fourth line is centered by Blake Lazat with Alex Turcotte and Carl Grundstrom on, it, on his wings. Looking ahead, Victor Arvidsson, Matt Roy, and all three goalies are UFAs, while Quinton Byfield and Arthur Kaliev are RFAs. The Minnesota Wild couldn't really do much this offseason and virtually have the same team as they did last year. Their goalies remain the same, with Philip Gustafsson expected to get more lion's share of the starts and Mark andre Fleury slated to be the backup. Their top four consists of Jared Spurgeon, Jacob Middleton, Jonas Brodeen, and Kalen Addison. Alex Goligoski is joined by Brock Faber on the third pair. While this is a solid defense, it's not anything special. Ryan Hartman is moved back to the first line center role with Kirill Kaprizov on his left and Matt Zuccarello on his right. Joel Eriksson Ek centers the second line with Matt Boldy on his left and Marcus Johansson on his right. Frederick Goudreau centers the third line with Marcus Foligno on his left and Brandon Duhame on his right. Marco Rossi centers the fourth line with Connor Duar on his right and Patrick Maroon, who they acquired from Tampa Bay, on his left. Minnesota needs to re-sign Philip Gustafson, Kalen Addison, and Brandon Duhame as they are all RFAs and need new contracts. Looking ahead, Matt Zuccarello, Marcus Foligno, and Ryan Hartman are all UFAs. The Montreal Canadiens are going to be in for a long season this year, especially playing in that Atlantic division. They have the same goalies as last year with Jake Allen and Samuel Montenbolt. The first pair is Michael Matheson and Davis Savard. Second pair is Jordan Harris and Caden Gooley. Third pair is Arbor Saika. It would also not shock me if David Rombacher, the fifth overall pick in this year's draft, makes the team out of camp, at least for the first 10 games. The first line for Montreal is centered by Nick Suzuki. He is flanked by Cole Caulfield on his left and Kirby Doc on his right. Christian Dvorak centers the second line with Mike Hoffman on his left and Josh Anderson on his right. Jake Evans centers the third line with Alex Newhook on his left and Brendan Gallagher on his right. Sean Monahan centers the fourth line with Yurov Slavkovsky on his left and Joel Armia on his right. The offense for the Canadians looks okay, but the defense and goaltending leaves much to be desired. Under the direction of new GM Barry Trotz, the Nashville Predators look to be in rebuild mode, but yet they still will be a competitive team. UC Soros will keep them competitive, and his backup Kevin Lankinen isn't bad either. Defense is the strength of this team. Their top four consists of Roman Yossi, Ryan McDonough, Tyson Barry, and the newly acquired Luke Chen. The third pair is Jeremy Lozano with Dante Fabro. This is a really solid this is a really solid decor that can do some damage offensively. The first line consists of Ryan O'Reilly centering Phil Forsberg and Gustav Nyquist. The second line consists of Thomas Novak centering Kiefer Sherwood and Luke Evangelista. 
The third line consists of Cody Glass, centering Philip Tomasino, and Yusso Parsonen. The fourth line is Colton Sissons with Yakov Trenin and Cole Smith. While I do not expect the Nashville Predators to make the playoffs in the Central Division, they will by no means be an easy team to play. Follow me on Facebook and Instagram at HockeyWiz777. Heading into this season, the New Jersey Devils have very lofty expectations. The only question mark with the Devils right now is their goaltending, which is the same as last year towards the end of the season with Vitek Vanacek and Arkira Schmid. Their top pair is the same as last year with Jonas Siegenthaler and Dougie Hamilton. The second pair has Luke Hughes paired with John Marino. Kevin Ball will be on the third pair with either Brendan Smith or Colin Miller. The second overall pick in the 2022 draft, Simone Nemich, could also make the team out of camp if he really impresses. But I do not think the Devils will waste a year of his ELC unless they think he will play a prominent role on the team. The first line of the Devils is centered by Nico Heischer, their captain. He is flanked by Timo Meyer on his left and Dawson Mercer on his right. The second line is flanked by Jack Hughes. The rising superstar is flanked by Jesper Bratt on his left and the newly acquired Tyler Toffoli on his right. Eric Halla, who was brought back on a three-year deal, is flanked by Andre Palat on his left and perhaps Alexander Holtz on his right. That third line right wing role is still up for grabs. The fourth line consists of Michael McLeod, Nathan Bastian, and perhaps Curtis Lazar. But there is still a possibility that Nolan Foote could play in that fourth line left wing role. Kevin Ball is still in RFA and still needs to get re-signed. Looking ahead, Tyler Toffoli is a UFA next season, while Dawson Mercer is a RFA. Unfortunately for the New York Islanders, they are an aging team with some overpaid washed up veterans. The only reason why they remain competitive is because of their goalie, Ilya Sorokin. They also for some reason decided to retain Simeon Varlamov for another 4 years, which makes little to no sense if you're gonna be paying Ilya Sorokin 8.25 million for the next 8 years. The defense for the Islanders is unchanged and is the same as last year. It consists of Ryan Pulak and Adam Pellick on the first pair, Noah Dobson and Sebastian Ajo on the second pair, and Scott Mayfield and Alexander Romanov on the third pair. The first line for the Islanders is centered by Bo Horvat. He is flanked by Matt Barzell on the right and Oliver Wallstrom on his left. Brock Nelson centers the second line with Kyle Palmieri on his right and Anders Lee on his left. JG Pajot centers the third line with Pierre Engvall on his left and Hudson Fashing on his right. Casey Sezikis, Kyle Clutterbuck, and Matt Martin are one of the premier fourth lines in the league. They just know how to do their job. Oliver Wallstrom is still an RFA and needs a new contract. Looking ahead, Cal Clutterbuck and Matt Martin are both UFAs and so is Sebastian Ajo. By the looks of how the Rangers have been signing free agents this year, it seems like they are trying to win it all. They have one of the best goalies in the league in Igor Shesterkin. He is backed up by three-time Stanley Cup winner Jonathan Quick. They have the same top four defensemen as last year with Adam Fox, Jacob Truba, Keandre Miller, and Ryan Lindgren. Braden Schneider is joined on the third pair by Eric Gustafsson. Mika Zibanejad centers the first line with Chris Kreider on his left and Capo Kako on his right. Vincent Trocek centers the second line with Artemi Panarin on his left and Blake Wheeler, the newly signed free agent, on his right. Philip Hedo centers the third line with Alexi Lafreniere on his left and Jimmy Vc on his right. Nick Bonino was brought in to center the fourth line. He's flanked by Barclay Goudreau on his left and Tyler Pitlick on his right. Alexi Lafreniere and Keandre Miller still need to get re-signed as they are both RFAs. Looking ahead, Cape Kako is an RFA again, as is Ryan Lindgren. Braden Schneider is also RFA and should get a hefty raise. At this point, who knows what direction the Ottawa Senators are going in. Last year, it seems like they were loading up to be a playoff team. But then this year, it seems like they are trying to sell off Alex DeBrinckit and trend the other direction. So it always seems like the direction of the Senators is always changing. They did manage to stable their goalie position, bringing in Jonas Corposalo to tandem with Anton Forsberg. They should make a formidable 1-2 punch in net. The first line should be very good. It consists of Tim Stutzel centering Brady Kachuk on his left and Claude Giroux on his right. I don't know if Alex Dabrinkit will be on the team come start of the season, but for right now, Josh Norris will be centering the second line with Dabrinkit on his left and Drake Batherson on his right. 
in the event that they trade to bring it, they will ask for a roster player so they can slot them in the lineup and maybe push up Ridley Gregg to the second line. Shane Pinto centers the third line with Ridley Gregg on his left and Matthew Joseph on his right. Mark Kastelik centers the fourth line with Parker Kelly on his left and Zach McEwen on his right. That's a very heavy fourth line and will compile a lot of penalty minutes during the season. Besides the Brinkett, the Senators also have to re-sign Shane Pinto. Looking ahead, they need to re-sign Eric Brandstrom and Jake Sanderson next year. The Philadelphia Flyers have perhaps the most interesting offseason this year. They shipped off Ivan Provorov, they traded away Kevin Hayes, and they are in the process of trying to trade away some of their other top guys such as Travis Konechny. The biggest highlight of the Flyers offseason perhaps is drafting Matvey Michkov in the 2023 NHL Draft. Matvey Michkov is a generational talent that dropped to 7 because of his contract status in Russia. If Matvey Michkov can get out of his contract before he was expected to, it would be a massive steal for the Flyers. Heading into the season, Carter Hart and Cal Peterson are the goalies, although Carter Hart has been rumored to be on the trade block. The first line consists of Morgan Frost centering Owen Tippett on his right and Joel Farabee on his left. The second line consists of Sean Couturier centering Travis Konechny on his right and Scott Lawton on his left. Noah Case centers the third line with Cam Atkinson on his left and Wade Allison on his right. Ryan Paling centers the fourth line with Nick Delarier on his left and Garnet Hathaway on his right. In the event that Sean Couturier is not able to play, Noah Cates will push up to the second line center and Scott Lyon slots down to the third line center, pushing Cam Atkinson to the second line left wing and one of their young wingers who impresses in camp could play a role in the lineup. Morgan Frost, Noah Cates, and Cam York are all RFAs and need new contracts. Looking ahead, Carter Hart, Wade Allison, and Owen Tippett are RFAs. The Pittsburgh Penguins are trying to do everything in their power to make another run at the Stanley Cup while Crosby still is in his prime. They still have the same goalies as last year with Tristan Jari and Casey DeSmith. Alex Nedeljkovic was also brought in as a third goalie, which is a solid insurance policy. The Penguins brought in Ryan Graves to pair with Chris Letang on the first pair. The second pair has Jeff Petrie paired with Marcus Pedersen and Pierre Oliver Joseph will be paired with Jan Ruda on the third pair. This decor could look vastly different as there are rumors that they are trying to trade for Eric Carlson. But there are holdups as the Penguins will need to shed some salary to be able to afford Carlson. The first line of the Penguins is centered by Sidney Crosby, as it has been for many years. He is flanked by Jake Gunsel on his left and Ricard Raquel on his right. Evgeny Malkin centers the second line as he has been for so many years. He's joined by Riley Smith on his left and Brian Rust on his right. Lars Eller was brought in as the third line center. He's flanked by Jeff Carter on his right and Mikhail Granlund on his left. Noel Akchari was brought in to be the fourth line center. He is flanked by Drew O'Connor and Matt Nieto. Looking ahead, Jake Gunsel is a UFA next season. They better lock him up before the season. The San Jose Sharks will be in for a long season as there are rumors that they are trying to shop Eric Carlson and Logan Couture. If they manage to trade Carlson and Couture, they are not going to have much talent left on the roster. As of right now, their goalies are Capo Kakonen and Mackenzie Blackwood, two fringe starters. Their top four consists of Eric Carlson, Mark Edward Vlasic, Mario Ferraro, and Matt Benning. Eric Carlson and Mark Edward Vlasic are two guys rumored to be moved. However, the Sharks would have to retain salaries on both of these players if they want to move them. Jake McDonald and Radim Simic are the third pair. The first line for the Sharks is Thomas Hurdle centering William Eklund on his left and Fabian Sederland on his right. As I mentioned before, Logan Couture was rumored to be on the trade block and you best bet the Sharks are trying to trade him to really get this youth movement underway. But for right now, he centers the second line with Alexander Barabanov on his left and Anthony Duclair on his right. Nico Sturm centers the third line with Jacob Pedersen on his left and Luke Cunnan on his right. Thomas Bordolo centers the fourth line with Oscar Lindblom on his left and Kevin LeBanc on his right. It's going to be interesting to see what the Sharks do from here on forward. Listen to Hockey West Talks podcast on Podbean and Spotify. Check out my travel channel at youtube.com backslash at Hockey Travels.
The Seattle Kraken are one team that I think will really surprise some people next season, as they did this season. They have a really solid starter in Philip Grubauer. He's backed up by Chris Drager, and their third goalie is Joey Decord. They have a really good defense, actually. Their first pair consists of Vince Dunn and Adam Larson. The second D pair consists of Jamie Oleksiak and Will Borgen. Then Justin Schultz is joined by Brian Dumoulin on the third pair. Schultz and Dumoulin have some experience playing together in Pittsburgh, so they should be a solid D pair. Seattle really didn't lose anybody, and they were able to lo- and they were able to add some key forwards. They still have the same first line as last year, with Matthew Beneers centering Jordan Eberle and Jared McCann. Alexander Wenberg centers the second line with Andre Burakovsky on his right and Jaden Schwartz on his left. Yanni Gord centers the third line with Ely Tolvanen on his left and Oliver Borkstrand on his right. Pierre Edward Bellamar centers the fourth line with Brandon Tanev on his left and Kyler Yamamoto on his right. Vince Dunn is a RFA and needs a new contract, but that shouldn't be an issue. Looking ahead, Jordan Eberle, Alexander Wenberg, Justin Schultz, and Chris Drager are UFAs, while Matthew Beneers and Ely Tolvanen are RFAs. The St. Louis Blues are a team that is stuck in no man's land because they're not really good enough to make the playoffs, yet they're not bad enough to completely tank. Their goalies are going to be Jordan Bennington and Joel Hafer. If Bennington struggles this year, Joel Hafer could steal some starts from him. St. Louis has the same top four as they did last year with Nick Letty, Colton Paranko, Justin Falk, and Tori Krug. Marco Scandella and Robert Bortuzzo round out their defense. The first line of the Blues is centered by Robert Thomas. He is flanked by Jordan Kairou on his right and Pavel Buchnevich on his left. Braden Shen centers the second line with Brandon Saad on his left and Jacob Verana on his right. Kevin Hayes centers the third line with Jake Neighbors on his left and Sammy Blay on his right. The fourth line has Nikita Alexandrov centering Kasperi Kapanen on his right and Alexei Torpachenko on his left. Alexei Torpachenko needs a new contract as he is a RFA. Looking ahead to next season, Jacob Verana, Sammy Blay, and Kasperi Kapanen are UFAs and they will finally get Marco Scandella's contract off their books next year. The Tampa Bay Lightning are a far cry from the team that won back-to-back Stanley Cups after losing Andre Palat, Ryan McDonough, and Alex Kalorn in consecutive off-seasons. They still have the big cat Andre Veslevsky in goal. He is backed up by Jonas Johansson. Because they don't really trust their backup, you can expect Andre Veslevsky to play a league high in games played. Victor Hedman still anchors the defense. He is joined by Nick Perbix on the first pair. Mikhail Sergeyev and Eric Cernak make up the second pair. Newly signed free agent defense Calvin DeHaan joins Zach Bogosian on the third pair. The first line of the Lightning is centered by Braden Point. He is joined by Nikita Kucherov on his right and Brandon Hagel on his left. The second line of the Lightning is centered by Anthony Sorelli. He is joined by Steven Stamkos on his left and Connor Sheary on his right. Nick Paul centers the third line with Tanner Janot on his right and Michael Ismont on his left. Luke Glendening centers the fourth line with Josh Archibald on his right and Cole Kolpke on his left. They still have Brett Seabrook's long term IR on the books. So they have a little under 3 million to spend. Tampa still needs to lock up Tanner Janot to a new contract. And because they gave up so many assets to acquire Janot at last year's trade deadline, they need to lock him up. Looking ahead to next season, Steven Stamkos is a UFA. So perhaps Steven Stamkos is working on an extension this year. Brandon Hagel is a RFA. The Toronto Maple Leafs are trying to go all in, try to win the Stanley Cup in the last year of Austin Matthews and William Nylander's contracts, unless they sign an extension. As of right now, their goalies are Ilya Samsonov and Justin Walt. They still have Matt Murray's contracts on the books, and because the Leafs need the cap space, it's not out of the possibility that they buy out Matt Murray's contract if they cannot trade him. The first pair is the same as last year. It consists of Morgan Rowley with TJ Brody. They signed John Klingberg to play on the second pair with Jake McCabe. Timothy Lilligren plays on the third pair with Mark Giordano. Austin Matthews centers the first line with Mitch Marner on his right and the newly signed free agent Tyler Bertuzzi on his left. John Tavares centers the second line with William Nylander on his right and the newly signed Max Domi on his left. 
David Camp centers the third line with Callion Croc on his right and Matthew Nice on his left. Dylan Gambrell centers the fourth line with Ryan Reeves on his right and Sam Lafferty on his left. The Leafs still need to re-sign Ilya Samsonov as he is a RFA. Looking ahead to next season, Austin Matthews, William Nylander, Tyler Bertuzzi, and Max Domi are all UFAs. So are TJ Brody and John Klingberg. With that in mind, if the Leafs do not win the Stanley Cup next year, it could be an utter disaster for the Leafs. The Vancouver Canucks are stuck in no man's land because they are talented enough to make the playoffs, yet they still can't make the playoffs. And because of that, they aren't bad enough to completely tank. That might be the worst thing for a hockey club. The Canucks are still anchored in goal by Thatcher Demko. He is backed up by Spencer Martin. Quinn Hughes is going to be their number one defenseman this year. He is paired with Carson Soucy, who they brought in from Seattle. Ian Cole was signed away from Tampa Bay to pair with Fred Pranak on the second pair. Tyler Myers will be playing on the third pair with Christian Rolanen. Elias Pettersson centers the first line with Andre Kuzmenko on his right and Anthony Beauvillier on his left. JT Miller centers the second line with Brock Besser on his right and Ilya Mikhaev on his left. Teddy Bluger centers the third line with Connor Garland on his right and Phil DiGiuseppe on his left. Nils Aman centers the fourth line with Vasily Potkolzin on his right and Dakota Joshua on his left. Vasily Kratsov is an RFA and needs a new contract. Looking ahead to next season, Anthony Bavillier, Teddy Bluger, Tyler Myers, Ian Cole, and Matt Irwin are UFAs. While the main concern for them is RFA Elias Pedersen, who could in reality demand up to $10 million or even more. The defending Stanley Cup champions Vegas Golden Knights will find it really difficult to repeat. They just paid Aiden Hill to bring him back to be their number one, or at least tandem with Logan Thompson. Robin Lehner figures to be on long-term IR, at least for the start of the season. They have to either offload his contract to another team, or hope that he remains out for the entire season. The top four is the same. It consists of Alex Petrangelo, Shea Theodore, Brady McNabb, and Alex Martinez. Zach Whitecloud is joined by Nick Craig on the third pair. Jack Eichel centers the first line with Jonathan Marshall on his right and Ivan Barbashev, who, who they paid a good amount of money to retain, on his left. Chandler Stevenson is their second line center. He's flanked by Mark Stone on his right and Brett Howden on his left. William Carlson centers their third line with Mike Amadio on his right and Paul Cotter on his left. Nikolai Waugh centers the fourth line with Keegan Colazar on his right and Will Carrier on his left. Brett Howden still needs to get re-signed as he is a RFA. Looking ahead to next offseason, Jonathan Marshall, Chandler Stevenson, and Alec Martinez are all UFAs. As the Washington Capitals core players get older, they will find it increasingly hard to make the playoffs as there are a lot of young, as there are a lot of rising young talent as younger, more prominent teams become their competition in their division. Their goalies are the same as last year with Darcy Kemper and Charlie Lindgren. The Capitals will have to hope that John Carlson is healthy the entire season. He is joined by Martin Faravari on the first pair. Rasmus Sandin, who was acquired in the trade from Toronto, is on the second pair with Nick Jensen. Joel Edmondson was acquired in a trade from Montreal. He plays on the third pair alongside Trevor Van Riemsdyk. Evgeny Kuznetsov centers the first line with Alex Ovechkin on the left. Evgeny Kuznetsov centers the first line with Alex Ovechkin on the left and Tom Wilson on the right. Nicholas Backstrom centers the second line with Max Pacioretty on his left and TJ Oshie on his right. Dylan Strom centers the third line with Anthony Mantha on his right and Sonny Milano on his left. Nick Dowd centers the fourth line with Lexi Protis on his left and Nicholas Abekubo on his right. The key for the Capitals is the health of Nicholas Backstrom. If he is healthy, they should be okay. But if he's not, the Capitals are an entirely different team. Looking ahead to next offseason, Anthony Mantha and Tom Wilson are UFAs, and so is Joel Edmondson. Rasmus Sandin is a RFA. The Winnipeg Jets are a team that might be rebuilding as there are persistent rumors that they are trying to trade Connor Hellebuck who is going to be a free agent next season. For right now though, Connor Hellebuck is slated to be the Jets number one goalie with Laurent Brossois being his backup. Josh Morrissey is the Jets number one defenseman. He is paired with Dylan DeMello. Neil Pionk plays on the second pair with Brendan Dillon. Nate Schmidt who makes a whopping 5.9 million per year plays on the third D pair alongside Dylan Sandberg. Logan Stanley is another guy that could figure into that picture. 
Mark Scheifele centers the first line alongside Kyle Connor and Nikolai Ehlers. Vladislav Nemesnikov centers the second line alongside Paul Perfetti on his left and Gabe Velarde on his right. Adam Lowry centers the third line with Alex Ayafalo on his left and Nino Niederreiter on his right. Rasmus Kupari centers the fourth line with Morgan Barron on his left and Mason Appleton on his right. The Jets still need to re-sign Rasmus Kupari, Gabe Velarde, Logan Stanley, and Morgan Barron. All are RFAs this season. Looking ahead to next offseason, Mark Scheifele and Nino Niederreiter are UFAs. So is Brendan Dillon, Dylan DeMello, Laurent Brossois, and the aforementioned Connor Hellebuck.